In this video, I'm going to look at percentage yield. So we'll start by explaining what percentage yield, and then we'll go on to some calculations. So all it does is it compares the amount of a product that a reaction actually makes with the maximum amount that could possibly be made from the balanced chemical equation. And sometimes you'll see the maximum amount being referred to as the theoretical amount. So I've included that term as well. So the formula we use to calculate percentage yield, you can see there it is, the actual amount divided by the theoretical or maximum amount multiplied by 100 gets it into a percentage. And you'll notice there I've asterisked um, amount. That can be in moles or mass. So in the worked example, I'm going to go through it twice using the moles method and then the mass method. And then after that, I've got three questions for you to try. And basically the way the question's phrased tells you which way you have to go. So we'll start with the worked example. So I'm going to use moles first, then I'm going to do the mass method afterwards. So we've got this question here. Copper carbonate reacts with carbon to form copper and carbon dioxide. And we're told that Dan eats 50 grams of copper carbonate with an excess of carbon and finds that he makes 21 grams of copper. From that information, we're going to calculate the percentage yield for the reaction. So we've got the balanced chemical equation there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out how many moles of copper carbonate Dan's got in his 50 grams. So there's the formula triangle, moles equals mass divided by MR. So Dan's got 50 grams and the MR of copper carbonate is 123.5. So that's 0 0.405 to three significant figures. So just a word of warning here, whatever you do, don't double the MR of copper carbonate. Copper carbonate's MR is 123.5. So moles is mass over MR, not two times the MR. So don't double it there. So now we know how many moles of copper carbonate Dan's got. Then by the balanced chemical equation, he would expect to make the same number of moles of copper from this two to two. So in other words, one to one ratio. So where we're gonna go now is, well, we know he's actually made 21 grams of copper. We're going to work out what he's actually made in terms of moles of copper. So he's actually made 21 mass divided by the MR of copper is 63.5, not 2 times 63.5. So he's made 0 0.331 moles of copper. So there's that formula again to calculate percentage yield. So actual over theoretical. So he's actually made 0 0.331. He could or he should have made 0 0.405 times 100 gets us 81.7. And we're going to express it to two significant figures, so 82%. And that's because the data here has been supplied to two significant figures. So the mass method starts off exactly the same. We're going to calculate the moles of copper carbonate from the mass over MR. So that's obviously the same as before. And obviously he expects to make the same number of moles of copper from the ratio. But what we're going to do now is we're going to work out, okay, so that's how many moles we expect to make. How many grams is that? So that's moles times MR of copper. We're expecting to make 25.7 grams of copper. He's actually made 21 grams. So we're just going to cut those numbers into the formula. 21 over 25.7 times 100 gives us exactly the same number as before, 81.7, so 82% to two significant figures. So as you can see, using moles or mass, we get the same answer. So three questions for you to try now. I'll just put them on the screen for a few seconds each. If you want to pause the video, try the question, and then when you're ready, play on for the answers. So there's the first one. And second one. And the third one. Okay, so the answer to the first one 
we've got to work out the maximum mass of chloroethane that can be made from that 258 grams of ethene and then calculate the percentage yield. So the way this question is written, it's steering us into the mass method, not the moles method. First thing I'm going to do is work out how many moles of ethene we've used. So mass over MR, 258 over 28, 9.214. So we'd expect to make the same number of moles of product, chloroethane, from the ratio. But we're now going to turn that into grams. So moles times MR is 594.3. So 594 grams to three significant figures because we've got three significant figures in the data. And then the final thing we're going to do is put the actual and theoretical into the formula and turn it into a percentage yield. So we're getting actual 462 over theoretical 594 times 100 gives us 77.7 recurring. So the three significant figures, 77.8%. So the next one, two parts, calculate the maximum mass of iron that can be extracted from 100 kilos of ore. And then we're given the percentage yield this time. We've got to use that to calculate the actual mass of iron that's obtained from that 100 kilos of ore. So the first thing we're doing is we're working out the moles of iron ore, iron 3 oxide. Little catch there, 100 kilos, we can't use that. We've got to turn it into grams first before we work out moles. So that's 100,000 grams divided by the MR of iron, three oxide, 160. So we're getting 625 moles of iron ore. So we'd expect to make, in terms of moles of iron, twice as many because there's a two to four ratio there. Two to four, so that's one to two. So we're going to make, or we expect to make, twice as many moles of iron. So that's 1,250. And now we can turn that into mass by multiplying by the MR of iron, which is 56. So we'd expect to make 70,000 grams. I'm putting it back into kilos just to tie in with the uh, units given in the question. So the next part, part B, we're told the percentage yield is 86.7%. So we expect to make that much, but the yield is only that much. So we're going to make 86.7% of the maximum. So it's 0 0.867 times 70, or you could go 86.7 over 100 times 70. Either way, 60.7 kilos is the answer. And then the final one, the one about aspirin. So again, two parts, calculate the maximum mass of aspirin possible and then the yield. And then we've got to come up with some possible reasons for why the percentage yield is not 100% basically. So again, just as before, we're going to calculate the moles of the starting material we've got. So in this case, it's salicylic acid. So two and a half grams of this divided by its MR which is 138, we've got that many moles of salicylic acid. So how many moles of aspirin? There's the aspirin. How many moles of aspirin should we make? Well, of course, the same, one to one ratio. So we'll now work out the mass now. So multiply that by the MR of aspirin, which is 180. So 3.258, so 3.3 grams to two significant figures, which ties in with the significant figures in the data. So percentage yield now, we actually got that many grams of aspirin, 1.8 grams. We should have made that many grams. So 1.8 over 3.3 times 100, 54.5, 55%, again to two significant figures. So why don't we get 100% yield? Well, some possible reasons for you here. The reaction may not have completed. So it might still be going when you've stopped it. So you're never going to get the maximum amount if that's the case. If your process involves transferring between containers, then you're going to lose every time. You're going to lose product every single time you transfer between beakers or flasks. So you might have a filtering stage. 
So the third one that I've come up with is this one here. We may get unwanted side reactions and they would give us different products. So for example, your aspirin and your ethanoic acid could then combine and eat away at the aspirin that you've made. So obviously you don't want that to happen because that's losing your product, but it is a possibility.